From the point of view of reconstruction, uh, it's a pretty confusing one with all the cables. So here I've got the mixer board out. Let's concentrate on the cables coming from the Q board here on it as well. So there's two cables coming down this side. Green white one is terminating here in the top right corner of the CPU board. And the thicker one, mainly brown cables, is coming around the corner to the topmost of these three on this edge. There's a total of four cables which are going to terminate on this record playback board. One of which is coming underneath. It's starting there and you need to put it in between the plastic standoffs that this board's sitting on. It comes out of this space and it goes all the way along to this header here. You can see there's a group of three, it's the one on the left. And the numbering of this, for instance, that one is JA09, so it's JA10 that it goes into. Where it's soldered in in one of these sort of yellow headers, then that's the lower number, and the higher number will be the header where the connector goes into. I've got a little short one coming from underneath this cap here to this header under this mounting post. So that's JA01 and JA02, respectively. This one starts here, JA05 going to JA06. This one immediately to the left of these record arm switches, JC01 terminating in JC02. J801 here is joining onto J802. That's there. So from there to there. Then coming from this board up here with the line out and so on on it, this cable here, JW11 is going to JW12 topmost of this group of three headers here. This cable here, JN01 by the headphone sockets. It's going to go along here to this cable tie. Eventually it's going to end up in the mixer, but you should probably tie it down before you put the mixer back in. And this little three cable one is going across to the CPU here. Uh, the remaining three empty sockets, that's going to be for your transport control board. It's going to be pretty obvious which one goes in which there. All the other loose ones are going into the mixer at various places. I found that on reassembly it was fairly easy without referring to the schematic. The only two that I did get mixed up, there's a long one coming from this board with all these RCA outputs for the tape output and the line output and everything. There's a long cable coming up here and it goes to a four pin plug here beside a fader for channel three. I got that mixed up with a long cable that goes down to the bottom right corner of the mixer board that's coming from this Q power conditioning board here, so watch out for that. This unit seems to be very susceptible to not shutting properly if you're not really tidy with your cable, so I hope you can see I've got quite a lot of effort to apply new cable ties and um, have some sort of logic to the way things go under and over and the way that they're plugged into this section so that this doesn't raise up and prevent the case from shutting properly. Another little issue on rebuild to be aware of. I was finding that I wasn't getting these uh, push push buttons for the XLR and for the Q factor to pop through properly and then this uh, selector switch here for line out Q and effect was kind of jammed. I couldn't even um, move it with the case tightened and so something I hadn't picked up on earlier is that there are two heights of these switches that go onto the well, onto this um, headphone 2 selector switch and also onto these record arm switches, the speed switch. And I actually had the speed switch and the headphone selector switch mixed up. But I hope you can see there, there are two different heights. Obviously the higher one is to accommodate this slightly raised area for that speed control. And then the lower, shorter one is meant to go there. So clearly this was jamming this longer switch up against there and preventing these buttons from coming through. So if I swap those around then presumably that's all going to be hunky-dory again. The other thing I was going to say about the case not shutting properly, uh, the reason that's got tape in it, I don't know if you can see, but like this uh, record enable switch is a bit bent. So I mean that's caught in the case at going down at one point. Um, so I've got this piece of tape holding it to this associated bracket so it will pass through the little hole without getting bent any further. So yeah, and that's another one of several things you have to get lined up just right in order to get the upper case back on. There.